Well, oh, actually, I said Sigmund, right? So, I have to redraw that. Sorry. So, here's your sigmoid colon. And the uterus is kind of coming down to your bladder. If, if there's a fistula between this ureter, this is actually probably going to the other kidney. What will happen is the colon is going to secret bicarb into your ureter. And the ureter is going to give it chloride back. It's kind of exchange, right? It's kind of like, you know, you stock market, buy and sell kind of thing, you know. You know, you give me a, it's a trade by batter. You know, probably too young or too old to know that. But anyway, you start pumping, <laughs> your colon start dumping the car, bicarb straight into your urine. So you pee bicarb out. Just because you have a fistula between. So we call it uterus sigmoidostomy. Kind of big word, big word. I know. How about this? Pancreatic fistula. Right? There's a fistula in your pancreas that's, you know, by, by solar, bicarbonate is produced by your pancreas. You know? I hope you still remember that stuff from physiology. And the pancreas is just dumping out on your bicarb. She's dumping it out. Right? So, hot up, mud piles. Beautiful mnemonics. You know this. You look like a god. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, I'm just kidding. Alright, so those are the causes, okay? I'm gonna erase this. This board is looking like a mess. Okay, I don't like messes. We've talked about the causes of metabolic acidosis. Oh, did I just erase that? My fault. Should have done that. Let's talk about the clinical features. The patient is gonna come into the hospital. It's going to have some kind of metabolic acidosis. Let me tell you exactly what they're going to classically be doing. But before I do that, it sounds so stupid and basic, but you will appreciate this formula now. So the patient comes in. I'm just putting hydrogen ions here because it's what's actually causing the problem. Like, but it's going up and that's why these guys going down. We talked about it at the beginning of this lecture. Um, the patient's gonna come in and he's gonna be doing this. They're not wheezing. They're doing that. What is that? They're, they're, they're taking deep, rapid, deep breaths. What is that called? Push more respiration. That's right. We call that push more respiration. Where did that come from? Give me one second. Look here. Biker drops, right? Bam. How many times I want to tell you that? Is that important? I bet you. Their pH is dropped. Their blood pH is dropping. They're producing so much CO2, so much CO2, remember where it came from? The CO2 need to get out because they're building too much CO2 inside their venous system. They got to hyperventilate because there's too much CO2, you got to get it out. So what do you got to do? <gasps> so when you take deep breaths, you, they try to catch oxygen, but they breathe out so they can blow it out. They try to blow out as much CO2 as they can, try to struggle, keep up with much oxygen because the body's like, I need oxygen, I need oxygen, I need oxygen. And they're like, oh, yes, I'm trying. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, it's called deep breath, hyperventilation. They are hyper. Have you seen somebody hyper before? Yeah. You know them. You probably met one of them. They're hyperventilating. <sighs> That's what you do. See, you don't see that in the textbook though. But you probably have a mental note now. They will hyperventilate. Try to get rid of the CO2. So it's called respiratory compensation. Compensation. I'm trying to speak to us. French here. So, I told you at the beginning, I'm just gonna erase this for one second. That's the clinical feature. Hyperventilation. 
I told you when you have a metabolic problem, the only way, the only way you can fix this is by coming down. You're not going back up because this top part is screwed up. Oops. It's screwed up. My pH is low. The only way you can fix it is by having respiratory compensation. So if you memorize this formula, Every time they give you a problem, if, you, if the problem is coming from the top, you know there's nothing you can do. The only thing you can do is come down to this formula. And how can I bring this pH by cup again? Tell me. You. Good. You got it. You lower the PCO2 because pH is inversely proportional to PCO2. That means... If PSCO2 goes down, how do they do that? They hyperventilate. <laughs> right? So that you can bring up, that's the only reason why they're doing it. You get it? Perfect. So, that is the respiratory compensation. But wait a minute. On the exam, they're going to ask you, how do you actually know they're compensating? Right? Normally, when they have a metabolic problem on top, they fix it by respiratory competition. That's where something called the Winters formula comes in. Winters formula. You know what? I think this guy was kind of stuck at home. Probably one cold blizzard. It's probably from Maine. I have no offense to people from Maine. But he just sat down like during the winter time. No, I'm kidding. And came up with this formula. And the formula is. 1.5, oh, I probably won't have the space, so, I write big, the reason I write it big, so you can see this very clearly, and this is high definition, so, hey, you get a lot back for a buck, I'm not getting paid to do this, I do it for free, I love my job, Winter's formula, which is 1.5 times your measured bicarbonate, minus 8 plus or minus 2. So, what is the point of this formula again? Okay, let me remind you. I told you, somebody has a metabolic problem, they fix it by doing what? Respite. <sighs> right? Breathing so hard, which is hyperventilating. The only way you can do it and figure out mathematically to know, are they actually doing a good job at this? Is you plug in numbers. Let's say it's, uh, the, the bicarb, well, in this case, is 20. I like good numbers. All right? That's 3, right? Minus 8 plus or minus 2. So, 30 minus 8, 22. Plus or minus 2. So, it's between 24 and 20. Now, this winter formula, what it gives you is the idea that if, the, if, you, if you get a decent number, that's telling you, oh, wait a minute, they're actually compensating by doing what? Hyperventilating. However, though, if the number that you get, oh, I'm sorry, this is my fault. PCO2. I was kind of lost there for a second. PCO2. That's what that stands for. Because it's not just Winter's formula. PCO2 will be between 24 and 20. Okay, so if you look at the number on the, you know,